Have you ever wondered about the difference between people who want the perfect thing or other people who are just satisfied with good enough? That's what we'll talk about today. You can't always get what you want, but if you try some time, you find you get what you need. The Rolling Stones. Today, we're going to talk about the concept about maximizers and satisficers. And these are people who kind of see things on a different level when it comes to buying things or working on things. And this is a concept that came up from Dr. Barry Schwartz in a book called The Paradox of Choice. And to give you a definition, it's that maximizers want the best of everything. They want to buy the best thing. They want to do the best they can. Everything should be the best. And then there's satisficers. And the satisficers are people who want good enough just to get the job done, to accomplish the thing that they're trying to accomplish. And they each have their pros and cons. And we'll talk a little bit about those. Barry Schwartz came up with a scale to measure this type of work. And it had questions, no matter how satisfied I am with my job, it's only right for me to be on the lookout for better opportunities. I often fantasize about living ways that are quite different than my actual life. No matter what I do, I have high standards for myself. When shopping, I have a hard time finding clothes I really love. And you can kind of see that he's blending the work world and the personal world where I want the perfect thing. Or I'm just looking for something that's good enough. To me, I think it's kind of interesting because I am definitely a satisficer. When I go shopping, I look for the thing that's good enough. If I'm going to spend 10 years looking for the perfect sheets for my bed or table for my living room, it's going to take forever. And also, the perfect thing might be quite expensive, so good enough is probably a little bit cheaper, and I'd rather save the money than have the perfect item. But my best friend, she's a maximizer. She wants everything to be fantastic, but she also wants her work and her efforts to be top of the line. She's very careful about what she'll accept as a project or what she'll take on because she knows that once she takes on a project, she will do it to the perfect degree. I'm like that when it comes to work because I believe that work has that expectation of being a maximizer. I don't think that's good enough really goes over very well in the work world. So I tend to be more of a maximizer at work because of those external expectations that are out there that I believe exist to impress our customers. But for myself, I am absolutely a satisficer. I believe in good enough. When I go shopping, when I mow the lawn, I remember once I ran out of gas and there was a two foot by one foot strip of grass that just didn't get mowed. Now, a maximizer probably wouldn't have let that happen because they would have gone out and gotten gas to make sure they did the perfect mowing job. But for me, two feet, I'm not going to worry about it. So the next time I grabbed it and I mowed that part of the grass and it was fine. Nothing bad happened. It's good enough. When I went out and bought a chair, I could have checked every furniture store online around my town. I found one. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm still pretty happy with it. I don't think I made a mistake, and the price was very reasonable. I always thought that this concept was interesting, primarily because my best friend and I are so different on the same thing. Sometimes when we go shopping, I'm like, oh, just get this. It's good enough. It's fine. It'll do the job. It's a difference that you can tell between people. You might think of some people in your life that you know that are either different than you in this particular aspect. When Dr. Schwartz published this study, he was looking at a number of students who were college seniors from 11 different schools. He found out that satisficers are about 20% more unhappy with their jobs. He said overall that maximizers got better jobs, but satisficers made more money. He says, quote, the maximizer is kicking himself because he can't examine every option at every point and just has to pick something, meaning pick a job. Maximizers make good decisions, but end up feeling terrible at them. Satisficers make good decisions and end up feeling good about it. 
And so a lot of it has to do with how you feel in the end about how you did when you were working or shopping for something. How satisfied with that decision are you? And he found that it wasn't so much that maximizers and satisficers have different standards. They may both have very high standards, but the difference is, is the satisficers end up happy once they've made a decision, while the maximizers ended up being depressed about it and less satisfied with their own lives. And he believes that as you get older, you get farther away from being a maximizer, which is why he suggests that you might get happier as you get older. I think in the end, you realize that you're never going to find the things that make you perfectly happy, and you want to get the things that make you mostly happy. Dr. Schwartz said then, quote, one of the things that life teaches you is that good enough is almost always good enough. You learn that you can get satisfaction out of perfectly wonderful, but not perfect outcomes. I think that's true. And I think that's what you learn after time. Also, in getting older, you start realizing the things that really matter. That maybe when you were younger, you had 20 criteria when it came to buying a car or 30 things when it came to finding an apartment. But as you got older, you learned a little bit more about what was most important and you followed after those things, knowing that you can't get everything that you want. And so it may not be that older people or as you age, you become more like satisficers. It may be that you just get better at picking the key important things better. He found that this trait was even between men and women. He thinks that in the end, people who are the opposite in couples might actually be happier or better together because one will balance the other. One will make sure that you still have high standards while the other one will make sure that you can actually get things done. Part of it has to do with just making a decision, or the opportunity will be gone, or you'll never get actually the thing that you want to do. And you can't sit and just spin on a decision all the time. At some point, you have to pick something. At least when you're a satisficer, it means that you'll pick something. It may not be the perfect thing, And what I found was interesting is when I was reading articles about this particular trait, I found a lot of people who were trying to talk maximizers out of being maximizers. And how can a maximizer get away from perfection? Because it's holding up your life. He said that there's a lot of fun decisions you want to go with. There's a lot of fun things, even in the pandemic. All these people who were trying to find the perfect sourdough, according to this article, or the perfect furniture, or the perfect thing, ended up realizing that when it became harder to shop for things or things were not as available, they had to make a choice. And it wasn't always going to be their perfect choice. Maybe they couldn't find the perfect paint color, but they could find a pretty good paint color that made them happy and so that they could get it done. Maybe this is what maximizers learn too, is that there's a time and a place for each of these attributes. Sometimes you need to be perfect, and sometimes you need to be a little bit more relaxed about it. And when you're successful, it's when you pick the right thing. So all these articles that talk about it, you know, talk about how they feel like they must have the perfect meal. I was listening to the podcast, No Stupid Questions. And on episode 14, they did an episode on maximizers and satisficers. And Angela Duckworth, who's a psychologist who wrote the Grit book, talks about how she is a maximizer. She comes from a family who demands perfection. And when she's looking for a lunch, when she's looking to pick up a meal, when she's looking to shop for something, she will go to the umpteenth degree to make sure that she gets the perfect thing. She even mentioned the fact that if she finds out that she goes to a town and she gets a dinner and she either doesn't order the best thing on the menu, or it goes to the best restaurant in that town. It bugs her. It really upsets her that she didn't have the best possible meal. Meanwhile, Stephen Dubner, who is the co-host on that show, was like, well, just go get a hot dog. Just go eat this. Just go find something to eat because you could spend all night looking for something to eat when you could be doing other things, when you could be exploring this town you're in or getting some work done. And so you could see where that tension comes between the perfection and the good enough. 
So then the question in one of the articles was talking about is who makes better decisions? Is it the maximizer who makes better decisions or is it the satisficer? I think what's interesting about it is that I don't think there is an idea that there is a way of being best. I think each situation calls for the right level of thing. In the end, what happens is, is that you end up learning better when you need to pull out that maximizer and when it's good enough to be a satisficer. Later, Dr. Schwartz goes on to talk about that when we have too many choices, it makes the right decision hard. It makes learning to choose harder. He says that when there's so many choices, it makes life hard. I think for the maximizer, I don't think it makes my life harder when I see 57 kinds of jams. I know what kind of jam I generally like, and it's usually fine. But he says, quote, and learning to choose in a world full of unlimited possibilities is perhaps too hard. Again, I think it's because of the maximizers who feel like they have to make the best choice. I love going into a grocery store and seeing 47 kinds of noodles. That makes me feel like I have choices and maybe I want to explore something new. So I never struggle. One of the articles I came into said that while they feel generally maximizers probably make better choices, in the end, it's too much of a struggle. It's too depressing and it's too hard for them. So he came up with some suggestions about how to satisfy, which means how to just, instead of making the maximum decision, make the good enough decision. And this article said that, first of all, you want to narrow down your choices. I mean, I do that naturally, too. I go into a grocery store. I see a lot of jam. Well, I know that I tend to like blueberry jam and I tend to like strawberry jam. And so I tend to look for those flavors. I also know that I tend to like natural ingredients versus artificial ingredients. So I look for that. And I also don't want to spend a lot of money on jam. So usually my choices are rounded down pretty well. If you can narrow down the choices by putting them into major categories, that will help you do it. So the article suggests that if you can break things down into smaller categories, and that will help you make those choices. And then he says that the maximizer needs to just make fewer choices and gives the example of Steve Jobs, who infamously had just black turtlenecks in his closet. He didn't have to pick what shirt he was going to wear that day. He ended up wearing the same thing every day. And then this article gives a suggestion of what they call the Eisenhower matrix. And some people will recognize this from the seven habits of highly effective people from Stephen Covey, where it's urgent, not urgent, important, not important. And if you have the urgent and important, you do the decision and you do it now because it's urgent and important. If it's important but not urgent, then that's when you can kind of go through a bigger thought process of trying to figure out what to do, taking those chunking principles in place or trying to figure it out so that you can put it on your calendar and decide slowly and deliberately if you're a maximizer. And then the not important, urgent, you can give that to somebody else. Maybe make someone else pick the restaurant or the TV show you're going to watch. And then the last is the urgent, not important. And if it's not urgent and it's not important, maybe you should just get rid of it. But that's called the Eisenhower Matrix, and that might help you make those decisions. An article in Psychology Today said that the problem that gives the maximizers anxiety is the fact that they fear about missing out. You know, when Angela Duckworth talked about missing the best meal in the best restaurant in a town, she's really afraid of missing out. And I don't have that fear. Chances are, if I visit a town, someday I'll be back in town. I can do more research and pick a different meal if I didn't like it. But that in the end, you should just make the best choice, get rid of the guilt, get rid of the fear that you missed out on something, and just evaluate each outcome, it says, on its own merits. And while I noticed that most of the articles really didn't have any advice when it came to the satisficers, and so being one, I thought I would give you my own advice, is that, first of all, rate the decisions that you're making. And if it's customer involved, And if there's this expectation of perfection or at least a very good job, then do the work as a maximizer would because someone is expecting that level of care. If it's something that doesn't require that level of care, like picking what you're going to watch tonight or what you're going to eat tonight, then give it the value that it deserves. 
if you're in Rome for one night only and you only get one meal, maybe that deserves a little attention. But if you're in your hometown where you're going to eat every night, that doesn't deserve much attention at all. But I think the biggest takeaway for me on the satisficer is sometimes I'm just a little too satisfied because I will go in and I will buy something that may be a big purchase. Let's say a computer. And I'll look at it and say, oh yeah, stats are fine on this. I'll buy the computer. When maybe I could have taken a little bit more time to look at the components or maybe picked a little bit more detail or even decided that I was going to switch to a different operating system like I just did recently. Maybe there's other decisions out there and by making a quick decision, you're not giving it the due diligence. And the danger in that is that let's say you buy something. So I want to buy a sleeping bag for camping, but I just go and I buy a sleeping bag. Oh, well, this one's not really that warm. I wish I had a warmer one. So then I go buy a warmer sleeping bag. Ooh, this one's really tall and I'm pretty short. And so it feels like there's a lot of extra fabric here. You know, and then when you buy these things and you start using them, then you start having wishes and you realize now I've bought 13 different kinds of sleeping bags. I've wasted a ton of money on it all because I wouldn't give it just a little bit more thought. So for my satisficer friends out there, I would say make sure that you give things, particularly the things that you're going to buy, because first of all, it's costly. And secondly, you just don't want all the stuff around your house. Give it more thought. Just don't buy the first thing you find. Don't buy the thing that satisfies the bare minimum needs. Give it a little bit more thought. What would you like in a sleeping bag? Would you like it to be down or synthetic? It varies based on whether you're going to get wet or not. Would you like it to be warmer or cooler, shorter or taller, enough for two people or one people? There are some decisions that are there. And a quick check on the internet or a shopping guide will help you think outside your satisficer box. So my challenge to you is figure out if you're a maximizer or a satisficer for the most part, or take note of when you change into a different personality type based on situations. Then try to determine how being in this particular camp has benefited you. Maybe as a maximizer, you make fantastic decisions and you should pat yourself on the back for that. But sometimes it takes too long. Or if you're a satisficer, you make quick decisions and you're on the go and you get things done quickly, but maybe you pick something that wasn't the right thing because you were trying to be okay. Write down a few things that you could do, like taking more time, doing a little bit more research, or making a quicker decision, and then counteracting the negatives that go along with this personality type. I think in the end, my friend and I are a perfect example of it. She got a little bit more relaxed over the years that we've been friends, and she can make quick decisions and sometimes just decide something's good enough. While I, on the other hand, have learned to do better pick things a little bit better, do a little bit more research, think about them a little bit better. And so when I was in my 20s, I was quick to make a decision. And my house is filled with the outcomes of all those quick decisions that ended up being wrong. Also, some other decisions I made in my life and all the other decisions in my life that came about quickly. I learned from her. And now I think because we're friends and because we're opposite sides of the scale, we're both better for it. And now our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from Friends. The only Raggedy Ann doll that wasn't raggedy. <laughs> okay, so I'm responsible, I'm organized, but hey, I can be a kook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you madcap gal. <laughs> Try to imagine this. The phone bill arrives, but you don't pay it right away. Why not? Because you're a kook. <laughs> Instead, you wait until they send you a notice. I could do that. Okay, okay. Then uh, you let me go grocery shopping, and I buy laundry detergent, but it's not the one with the easy pour spout. Why would someone do that? <laughs> one might wonder. Someone's left a glass on the coffee table. There's no coaster. It's a cold drink. It's a hot day. Little beads of condensation are inching their way closer and closer to the surface of the wood. Stop it! <laughs> oh my God. It's true. Who am I? You can tell right away 
that Monica is a maximizer and her friends, they're all satisficers. And they're trying to prove to her that she, in fact, is a maximizer or sometimes a perfectionist. But the question is, are their lives better because she is a maximizer and she takes care of cleaning everything? They might make fun of her, but I bet you their house and the things around them are a lot better because she's there. Could she be a little bit more relaxed about it? Probably so. All right. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you being out there. I hope this helps you see a new aspect to your personality. And please remember to tell a friend that they can make better choices, quicker choices by taking small steps. 